Okay, let's see. Audio video on the web. One sec. So web developers wanted to use video and audio on the web for a long time, ever since the early 2000s, when we started to have bandwidth fast enough to support any kind of video. Uh, in the early days, native web technology such as HTML didn't have the ability to embed video and audio on the web. So proprietary technologies like Flash uh, became popular for handling such content. This kind of technology worked okay, but it had a number of problems, including not working well with HTML and CSS features, security issues, and accessibility issues. The native solution would solve much of this if done right. Fortunately, a few years later, the HTML5 specification had such features added with the video and audio elements and some shiny new JavaScript API for controlling them. We'll, we'll not be looking at the JavaScript here. This is just basic foundation that can be achieved with HTML. We won't be teaching you how to produce audio and video files. That requires a completely different skill set. We have provided you with sample audio and video files and example code for your own experimentation in case you are unable to get a hold of your own. There are quite a few OVPs, online video providers, YouTube, Dailymotion, Vimo, and SoundCloud. Such companies offer a convenient, easy way to host and consume videos so you don't have to worry about the enormous bandwidth consumption. Even uh, offer many code for embedding onto your web page. If you go that route, you can avoid some difficulties we discuss in this article. Oh, interesting. <coughs> the video element shown, the video element allows you to embed a video very easily. A really simple example looks like this. So SRC controls. Your browser doesn't support HTML5 video. Here is a link to the video instead. So SRC is the same way as the image element. The source attribute contains a path to the video you want to embed. It works in exactly the same way. <coughs> Controls, user must be able to control video and audio playback. It is especially critical for people who have epilepsy. You must either use controls attributes or include the browser's own control inf interface or build your own interface using an appropriate JavaScript API. At minimum, the interface must include a way to start and stop the media. Hmm. Interesting. And adjust the volume. The paragraph inside the video tags this is called fallback content. This will be displayed if the browser accessing the page can't support the video element, allowing us to provide a fallback for older users. This can be anything you like. In this case, we provided a direct link to the video file so the users can at least access it in some way regardless of what browser they're using. The embedded video will look like this. Wow, this is cool. So if I were to go uh, code, does this work for any type of? Gonna be let's just do IMG. Sorry, not IMG. Um, video. 
and then we'll do throw a video in the I can use. Background's so trash. I guess I don't have a video. We'll get into it later. Supporting multiple formats. There is a problem with the example above, which you may have noticed already. If you try to access the live link from a browser like Safari or Internet Explorer, the video won't play. This is because different browsers support different video and audio formats. Let's go through the terminology really quick. Formats like MP3, MP4, and Dub and WebM are called container formats. They contain different parts of the video that make up the whole song or video, such as an audio track, a video track, and metadata to describe the media being presented. The video, the audio and video tracks are also in different formats. So a WebM container usually packages OGG and Vorbis audio with VP8 and VP9 video. This is supported mainly in Firefox and Chrome. An MP4 container AAC or MP3 audio with H264 video. This is supported by Internet Explorer and Safari. The older OGG tends to go with OGG Vorbis and OGG Thera video. This was mainly supported in Firefox and Chrome but has been superseded by the better quality WebM format. The audio player will tend to play an audio track directly. These don't need containers. Okay, so video is the problem. <clears throat> it's not quite that simple as you can see from the audio video codec compatibility table. In addition, no, there's a table. Wow. Basic support, yes, yes. Damn. These are a lot of requirements. Okay. Um, in addition, many mobile platform browsers cannot play an unsupported format by handing uh, can play an unsupported format by handling it off to the underlying system's media player to play. But this will do for now. <clears throat> the above formats exist to compress video and audio into manageable files. Raw video and audio is very large. Browsers contain different codecs. Codec is a blend code decoder. Okay, like Vorbis or H264, which are used to convert the compressed sound and video into binary digits and back. As indicated above, browsers unfortunately don't all support the same codecs, so you'll have to provide several files for each media production. If you're missing the right codec to decode the media, it just won't play. You might be wondering why this situation exists, honestly. Um, MP3 and MP4 H.264 are both widely supported in good quality. However, they're also patent, of course. Patents. 
America patents, American patents cover MP3 until at least 2017 and H.264 until 2027 at the earliest, meaning that browsers that don't hold the patent have to pay huge sums of money to support these formats. It would be, hmm. in addition, many people avoid restricted software on principle in favor of open formats. This is why we have to provide multiple formats for different browsers. So how would we do this? Let's take a look at updating the example. Uh, I see. So you've taken the SRC attributes out of the actual video tag and instead included a separate source element. That points to its own source. Okay. So video is just controls and then you have source which has its own SRC attribute. <clears throat> Sorry, so you have a source element that has its own source attribute. In this case, the browser will go through the source element, play the first one that it has the codec to support, including WebM and MP4 sources should be enough to play your video on most platform browsers these days. So you just, so if you're making a video, you just need to output it to do different, okay. Each source element also has a type attribute. This is optional, but it is advised that you include them. They contain the MIME types of video files. And browsers can read these and immediately skip videos they don't understand. If they are not included, the browser will load and try to play each file until they find one that works, taking up even more time and resources. So the browser just looks at the type. If the type's not there, it tries to load the video. If it doesn't work, moves on to the next one. If the type's there, looks at it, does it understand? No, moves on to the next type. Okay, gotcha. There are a number of other features you can include on an HTML5 video. Take a look at our third example below. Video controls width 400. Okay, so that's the, that. So that gives you the size of the video. Autoplay, loop, muted. Mm. Oh, I see. Poster, poster.png. What does the poster do? Oh, well, I guess the poster is the background video or the thumbnail. Width and height, you can control the video size either uh, with these attributes or with CSS. In both cases, videos maintain their native width and height, also known as aspect ratio. If the aspect ratio um, if the aspect ratio is not maintained by the sizes you set, the video will grow and fill the space horizontally, and the unfilled space will just be given a solid background color by default. This attributes this attribute makes the video makes the audio or video uh, you start playing while the rest of the page is loading. You are advised not to use auto playing video on your sites because users can find it really annoying. True. Loop, this makes the video or audio start playing whenever it finishes. This can also be annoying. Muted, attribute causes the media to play with sound turned off by default. Poster, this attribute takes its value as the URL, which will be displayed before the video is played. Okay, so it is, a, it is intended to be used for a splash or advertising screen. Preload. They didn't have a preload. This attribute is used in the element for buffer and large files. It can take one of three values. None does not buffer the file. Auto buffers the media file. Metadata buffers only the metadata for the file. Okay. All right, man. Take care. Yeah, see ya.
And then there were two. Okay. Um, you can find, all right. So the audio element works in exactly the same way as the video element, with a few small differences as outlined below. A typical example might look like so. Audio controls, source, so it's the same thing. You have different sources and produce something like this. This takes up less space than a video player as there's no visual component. If you just need to display control to display controls to play the video, other differences from HTML5 video are as follows. Audio element does not support width and height. Also does not suppose, uh, support poster. Other than this, it supports all the same features as video. True. Restarting media playback. And any time you can reset the media to the beginning, including the process of selecting the best media source. If more than one is specified using source elements by calling the elements load method. What? At any time, you can reset the media to the beginning. including, you can set the media to the beginning, including the process of selecting the best media source. If more than one is specified using source elements by calling the elements load method. At any time, you can reset the media. I'm having trouble figuring out what this means. So anytime you can reset the media to the beginning by including the process of selecting the best media source. More than one is specified using source by column. All right. So var. So variable uh, media. I have no idea what this means. You have no idea what this means either? Nope. Uh, so var media element document dot get element by ID. My media element media dot element dot load. And this is uh, JavaScript. Has to be. Yeah, this is JavaScript. Var is a JavaScript. Um, what is it? Uh, variable. Uh, yeah, this this is a method for naming variables in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, load method is used for. Uh, restarting uh, resetting the media and uh, you know how when you click on a video the quality is automatically set mm -hmm. so I guess uh, load does the same thing it uh, selects the best uh, source so it selects the best quality and uh, it starts from the beginning mm. So I think that's what it means. I'll have to search. It's not really doing much in terms of explaining. So at any time, you can reset the media to the beginning. So reset the media to the beginning, including the process of selecting the best media source. If more than one is specified using the source elements. So if more than one is specified, so if more than one media is specified, you can yeah, reset so like, it all uh, in the beginning and reset the process of selecting the best media source. 
Okay. Well, I mean, it makes sense. It just doesn't really explain why you would need to do that. Yeah. So here you're making a variable called media element, and you're setting it equal to document dot get element by ID my media element, and then you're loading this. Yeah, so you're just loading it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, detecting track addition and removal. <laughs> so you can monitor the track list within a media element to detect when tracks are added to or removed from the media's element. For example, you can watch for the add track event to be sent to the media auto track list to be informed when tracks are added to the media. Sure. I'm sure they'll explain this in more detail later. <clears throat> All right, displaying video text tracks. Now we'll discuss a slightly more advanced concept that is really useful to know about. Many people can't or don't want to hear the audio and video content they find on the web, at least at certain times, for example. Many people have audi auditory impairments, so can't hear the audio. Others may not be able to hear the audio because they're in a noisy environment uh, or might not want to disturb others. Many people who don't speak the language of the video might want a text transcript or even translation to help them understand the media content. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to provide these people with the transcript of the words being spoken in the audio video? Well, thanks to HTML5 video, you can. With the web VTT format and track element, transcribe me to write down, okay? VTT is a format for writing text files that contains multiple strings of text along with metadata, such as what time in the video you want each text string to be displayed, and even limited styling position information. These check strings are also called cues, and you can display different types for different purposes, the most common being subtitles, captions, let people who can't hear audio understand, don't understand spoken word. So subtitles, translation for foreign material, captions are synchronized transcriptions, and time descriptions for conversion, text for conversion to audio to serve people with visual impairments. Mm. A typical web VTT file will look something like this. One, this is the first subtitle. This is the second subtitle. Oh, I see. To get this displayed along with the, the HTML media playback, you need to save it as a VTT file in a sensible place. Link to the VTT file with the track element. Mm -hmm. uh, track should be placed within audio or video, but after all, but after all the source elements. Use the kind attribute to specify whether the cues are subtitles, captions, or descriptions. Further, use src lang to tell the browser what you have written, what language you have written the subtitles. Okay, so video controls, you have the source, then track, kind, subtitles. As source, you have the source of the subtitles and then the language. Okay, I see. Interesting, okay. This will result in a video that has subtitles displayed kind of like this. For more detail, please read adding captions and subtitles to HTML5 video. You can find that example that goes along with the article on GitHub. This example uses some JavaScript to allow users to choose between different subtitles. Note that to turn the subtitles on, you need to press the CC button and select an option. Okay, that's only because they use JavaScript, okay.
So active learning, embedding your own video. Nice. For this learning, we'd ideally like you to go out into the world and record some of your own video and audio. Most phones these days allow you to record audio and video very easily, and provided you can transfer it onto your computer, you can use it. You may have to go through, you may have to do some conversion and end up with a WebM or MP4. In the case of video and MP3, there are enough programs to allow you to do this without too much trouble. We'd like you to have a go. If you're unable to source any video, then you can feel free to use our example. Save your audio file to in a new directory on your computer. Create a new HTML file called index, add audio video elements to the package, make them display the default browser controls, give them, give both of them source elements so that browser will find the audio format that they best support it. These should include type attributes, give the video, give the video element a poster that will display before the video starts to be played. Okay, let's try this. This was the video I was looking for. Um, let's do new folder. Uh, video. Yes, then we're going to put this in here. Um, So new folder video is in here. Okay. Now let's try this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the video. And we're going to do controls. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do source. Oh, wait, how did they do it? Okay, so you close. Oh, I see, okay. Source, so I see. It's going to be um, dash B one two seven seven. Four. Type video dash four. Close. Okay, well, at least it opened. Um, and then, what else did they want? Ask controls. Oh, 
poster. Equals Hmm. So these are all attributes. Controls. Loop. Try and open this. Nice HTML. Because this is on Internet Explorer. Let's try opening it with a real browser, such as Google Chrome. Chrome supports MP4. What is wrong? Video dash MP4 maybe? There's a loop and a loops. Now, what if I do? So it doesn't play right off the bat. So if I do autoplay, save, and refresh,
Is autoplay the right word? Yeah, autoplay. <clears throat> Okay, it works here. No, no, no. Um. Wonder why. Internet Explorer. That yeah, should work. Is this Internet Explorer 9? Yeah, 11. So why isn't this working? Um, We hope you had fun playing with the videos and audio and web pages in the next article. Hey, what if I were to do instead of video, change it to audio? And then get rid of the poster. Share on one. Um, 
are there so many golden retrievers? Why does an auto play work? If I get rid of controls. For some reason, auto play is not working. Okay. 